Hey FlossTube, it's Jen from Jen's Stitching Niche, back for my 12th video. It's been a little while since my last video, not as long as some of the breaks between them, but it's been a couple of, well, about three crazy weeks as the semester ended. But the semester's over, which makes me super happy. Um, it was a very busy semester, and I'm just glad it's over. So Pretty Southern Joe over in Oregon, I hope your semester ended well also. Um, I have quite a bit to show you today. I've been busy since the semester ended about a week ago, and so I've got a lot of fun things to show, not necessarily cross-stitching, but I'll get to that in just a minute. Um, <clears throat> a couple of, um, I want to say a couple of thank yous for some nice gifts that I've gotten over the past few days. Um, first, Nicole from Buckeye Stitcher sent me a Thanksgiving card and a Christmas card, and I wanted to say thank you. Those were very sweet. I really enjoyed those. I was watching her video, and she showed a book, and then, of course, I immediately went and bought the book. But if you haven't seen this one, it was on Hirschner's. And the main reason I got it was for that pattern right there. I'm going to stitch that and hang it up with my Santa collection that I display every Christmas. So... Thank you, Nicole, for pointing that out. Of course, I joked with her that it cost me more than the $5 for the book because then I have looked around at other things and I ended up buying this kit, which I love these little sequin ornaments. So that's another project that I've got in my baskets of projects to do, but can't wait to get to do that. Um... I also want to say thank you to Glenn from Southern Stitcher. She sent me and Teresa a stocking chart, which is really cute. It's the cross-stitch shop. So you see at the bottom, it's a cross-stitch shop with the little DMC case right there. That's so cute. And then the house above. I thought that was very sweet, Glenn. Thank you very much. And I might stitch this this year and hang it up because that is too cute. So it's Cross Stitch Shop Stocking, Village Stocking Collection number three. So very sweet. <clears throat> and then one last thank you goes out to one of my customers who, um, I'm not going to mention her name, but she knows who she is. She sent me a very nice gift, and I really appreciate that. That was super sweet. It made my day. So thank you so much for being so generous. Um, which is one of the things I love about FlossTube is how nice everybody is. I've enjoyed the past two years watching the videos and really the past six months recording videos and really getting involved with FlossTube community. Um, you guys are great. Um, the other day I was watching Andrea Stitches in Colorado and she mentioned me and it just made my day. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's so sweet. So um, lots of great stitchers. Lots of great floss tubers, and I'm glad that I get to participate in this. Um, I wanted to do some shout outs of some videos of some um, people that I've been watching that I, um, I've been watching them for a while. I don't know why I haven't mentioned them before, but they're really fun to watch. And it includes um, Lily42, uh, Lily at 42. She is a new mom of a little girl, and she has a little boy. and she does some really cute stitching, and she's a very calm person on video. So if you haven't watched her, you should go and watch her videos. And another one that I've watched lately is Stitching Jewels. She stitches these huge, like, pen and ink pieces. And I just wanted to let her know that my sons have been watching me cross-stitch for years. You can see I've got quite a collection, and I'll talk about those in just a second. And they're always like, oh, those are nice. Yeah, that's cute. My older son walked through when I was watching Stitching Jewel's video, and she showed one of her pieces of a pen and ink. And he's like, now, that's impressive. And I was like, okay. But it is. It's gorgeous work. So if you haven't watched Stitching Jewel's, you should go and watch her videos as well. Um, and then another one that a lot of people have mentioned, and I just love to watch her videos, is Candy Stitches. Her last video has really made me think very much about getting another puppy. She showed one of her little... Um, Yorkie puppies. It was so cute, but she's hilarious too. I like her personality. So Candy Stitches is another one that if you haven't watched her videos, you should go and watch her as well. Um, <coughs> so I actually wrote down what I'm going to talk about today because I 
this video yesterday and recorded it like two or three times and it was a mess and I'm like just forget it and I will have to try it again so I'm trying again today I mean I had recorded it so much there were clips where you could see sunlight and then there were clips where it was dark outside so it was a crazy day so um, I'll do better today because I've got my list down here that's what I keep looking at um, I'm gonna get right to my finishes because I've had a few finishes, but not all of them are cross-stitch finishes. Um, well, let me do this, because I know you're probably looking at these pictures, or these pieces behind me. So I'll just talk about the wall that I'm sitting in. I'm in my craft room. This wall over here, you have seen probably before, those are the Lizzie Kate alphabets that I have. Um, and I'm sitting at my craft room table, and behind me is my Christmas wall. So. You can see that these two on the outside, these are Santas from the Leisure Arts, those Christmas Remembered books from various ones, because I've got the whole collection. When I was about, oh, I guess I had both of my sons. They were little. I found them on eBay, and so I started buying all of them that I could. So I've got the whole collection now, and I love to look through them. I love all of those old-fashioned ornaments and things, but eventually I'm going to stitch some more. This is a Shepherd's Bush um, Snowman. It's the first time I stitched with silks, and it was on hand-dyed fabric, and I didn't like it because you can see that it's not white. It's almost a pinky color. As the thread came through, it picked up the dye from the fabric. Did not like that. It's cute, but it was very frustrating when I was stitching it. Um, above me is Jane Patterson and Teresa's Reproduction Samplers. I love stitching this. And this fits in a standard frame. This is just a frame I got at Hobby Lobby. But I just love that piece. And I've had, I have the chart in my Etsy store and I sell out every time I get it. And I call Teresa and I'm like, I need more Jane Patterson. But it is really cute. Really pretty. And then this is another one of Teresa's. This is A Weary World. It's one of her originals. Of course, Lizzie Kate. One of her flip -its. And then above... A Weary World, that is Nora Corbett's um, Christmas Fairy. That's one of the kits that came out, I guess, it's probably 2006, 2007. And then above that are some more of the Leisure Art Santas. And above at the top up there, that's uh, a carriage house sampling Christmas Quakers, I think. And then the one in the very middle, right above Jane Pattison, that's a Paula Vaughn. Um, Christmas, mem Christmas memories or memories of Christmas. I love that piece. So that's my Christmas wall. <coughs> okay, now on, let's talk about my finishes. So there, it's kind of crazy up here the way I've got it organized. But my first big finish, which I posted on Instagram, was this piece. So this is stitched on 40 count with this called for sampler threads. And it's going to be used to make a book cover. So I can't pronounce the name. I've shown this before in my whip parade, but this is the pattern. And you're supposed to finish it as a book for threads, but I'm going to turn it into a book cover, something like this. So my sister has, she does sewing, and she has a book that had the pattern for this where you make a little book cover, and then you just slip notebooks in there. And this is my crafting notebook. And it's really cute. And so I'm going to get some fabric and turn this into a notebook cover as well. Even though it says sampler threads, it's still going to be cute to have as a little crafting notebook. So that's my big cross stitch finish for the past week. And I think I finished that a couple weeks ago. But then I've been doing other things. So I the semester ended on December six and we had a huge blizzard by the way for the south mississippi it was crazy we we never see snow during the day and it snowed all day we had so much fun my husband and i spent most of the day outside walking in the snow um and if i can figure it out i'll insert some pictures that i took of uh, the snow i had a lot of fun being an amateur photographer that day but um it was a great great snow and we're supposed to have snow on Christmas, which is unheard of in South Mississippi. You know, let me see if I can pull it up. Oh, 
it's disappeared. Yesterday we had a little snowflake on Christmas Day. Now we just have cloudy. Mm, anyway. Oh well. There's a little bit of Christmas, white Christmas excitement. So we, anyway, so um, since the semester ended, I've been working on other projects work-wise. So I've been doing things for classes for next semester and we're in the process of looking for a new microbiologist. So I've been working on that ad, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, of course I'm working on the textbook, but I'm, I've decided that I was going to organize my time. So I'd work in the morning and then I would craft in the afternoon. So I would work until about noon, take a eat lunch, and then I would come up to my craft room and work on crafts. And I did that three days last week and yesterday, which today's the 19th, so Tuesday. So I've done that pretty much almost a week now. So I do have some finishes. I love to craft and I'll do almost any type of craft. Um, and I like to sew, I like to do applique work, I like to do those little, you know, the little kit that I showed you with the sequins, any type of crafting thing. I love to craft. And this is one kit that I bought a few, probably about a year ago. This is a kit put together by Happy Hollow Designs. It's called Stitch by Numbers. And it's for those of us who want to do this type of paper piecing, but we don't have the patience or the talent to do so. Um, the kit comes with a iron-on interfacing with the patterns of how you're supposed to piece together all these. And you iron on the fabric in a certain sequence and then sew the next piece on and then take that second piece you've sewn on, turn it and iron it down to the, um, to the little canvas and do the next piece and when you when you do all that you end up with these little like little rectangles or sometimes it's not perfectly squared and you sew those pieces together and then you end up with three big panels so those three big panels together and you have your Santa face super easy took me a day and a half to do this and I just loved it so here's my finished project isn't that cute I mean, everything lines up so perfectly. And when I bought this, I bought this as the kit, so it came with the fabrics. I didn't even have to pick out the fabrics. And I just quilted it, did a little quilting stitch around the edge of it. I did that because I entered, I did one of these as a witch's face last year, year before last, and I entered it in the state fair, and they wouldn't accept it as a quilted piece. I had to enter it as a holiday gift because I didn't put this stitch around the edge. So I stitched around the edge. Now it's a quilted piece. So, but very cute. And again, if you're interested, it's just stitch by number. And I know there's several kits out there. So if you, it's not just Santa, you can do Halloween stuff. It's really cute, really fun. Beginner stitchers, they've got something for us. <clears throat> okay. And then the next thing I did came from a thrift store find. So I like to look at the crafts section, see if they've got anything, you know, always looking for those out of print charts that somebody decided to get rid of. Or I know um, one person showed just boxes and boxes of like specialty threads that they found at a thrift store or an estate sale. I'm, I'm looking for that. But I found a big bag of crafting items and, you know, some things I keep, some things I put on stash and load or on eBay and I found this one and I think I paid three dollars for the whole bag and it has lots of different things in there and this was one of them and it's just you know it was a little package you get at Walmart with felt and yarn and you're supposed to put it together it's supposed to look like this and I'm always skeptical about these I'm like eh, it's not gonna be that cute it's probably not even made out of the right stuff that they send you and I decided I was going to try it on one of these crafting days that I'm doing. And you, it comes with a piece of fabric that has all of these pieces here. But I really didn't want all these packages and things. I just wanted the Santa Claus. So I followed the instructions and I made a Santa. Let me pull him up here. And he is adorable. Can't believe he looks as cute as he is. So there he is. Isn't he adorable? 
So, oh, he's got some fuzz on his arm. So I had to break out the hot glue gun. And this is just yarn that I wrapped around pencils and soaked in hot water, let it dry, and it turns into little curls. And he's so cute. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite, favorite finishes so far this year that I've made because he looks so good. I mean, there's some issues, but he's that's to the back. So, so adorable. He'll go on my Santa. I decorate my mantle with all my Santas. I have a whole collection of Santa Clauses. So that was my second finish. And this is from 1998, so I don't know if you can find these. It's Sunset, Santa Chill Chaser. You can probably check eBay and see if they have any more. And then my third finish this week is wool applique, which I'm obsessed with the wool arts right now. I want to do rug hooking, which I've talked about. And my husband told me that's he got me a, a stand so I can do that for Christmas. And um, I love wool applique. And I picked up this kit one night when I was staying at my parents' house when my dad and mom were both kind of needing some assistance. So I would stay up late at night listening to make sure they were okay. And then when you have nothing to do, so you shop. So I bought this kit. This was Primitive Gatherings Blue Hydrangea Table Mat. And I love hydrangeas. I've got blue, purple, pink, white hydrangeas all around the north side of my house. And I got the kit, followed the instructions, and ended up with this beauty. So the blue is just a hand-dyed wool. So you get that modeling in the different colors. And then the, I got the, a little piece of blue, a little piece of green, and then a large piece of this black felt. And it's super easy. You just, you know, iron on freezer paper to the piece and draw to, to, with your template. And you do the iron on, inter, uh, it's, not, it's like wonder under to, to hold the pieces in place. And then you just use different stitches to attach the wool pieces to the background. So the flowers are just attached with French knots and um, straight stitches. And then the leaves are attached with blanket stitch and stem stitches. And then you just attach the background to the lining with a blanket stitch. Super fun. fun. It took me about... I started this on Saturday and finished it on Sunday when Teresa, Teresa came over Sunday and we stitched and I finished this while she was here. So I love these kind of projects. I can't wait to do more of these. Too cute. Now, while Teresa was here and I finished that, she's like, so what are you going to do next? And I've got all kinds of projects that I need to get done. I've got baskets and I spent Saturday sorting through and kind of organizing things into groups. I've got a lot of sewing. I picked up some of the row by rows this year. I haven't even put those together. I've got just lots of projects that I need to finish. So one of the things I pulled out was one of the sequin kits. So I finished these. I've shown one of these. I bought this from Hershner's probably the same time. What did I show from Hershner's? No, it wasn't when I bought the book. This was earlier. But I got these kits when they were on clearance. I finished one and put it in the fair, and then I just finished the other two. So, really cute. If you haven't seen these, you get sequin pins, sequins, and beads, and then foam shapes. And you just follow a pattern. Super easy, super blingy. Love those. Which leads me to another thing. I've been making those sequin ornaments for a while. I can remember making them probably when I was in the fourth grade, so 1980, and just loved them. And my mom would buy me the kits and I would finish them. And one of my favorites was a Miss Santa Claus. And when I was doing this back in the spring, I'm like, I wonder if they have anything like these with the different, like, dolls. And I couldn't find anything. So I went on eBay and I found Mr. Claus to go with Mrs. Claus. And I bought it and got it in. And it's an old kit. Teresa's made fun of me because there's some rust on some of the parts. It's... It's an old kit from the late 70s, early 80s. But I finished him, and she thinks he's so ugly. She even told me that Steve thinks it's ugly, too, <laughs> her husband. I'm like, he is ugly, but he's very meaningful to me. So I think he's 
adorable. But that was one. But what's so funny is I have Miss Claus where my mother has it. And I was telling her, I'm like, when you get your Christmas decorations out, can I please get Mrs. Claus to put on my Christmas tree? And she's like, I'm not doing Christmas this year. I'm not getting my Christmas tree out. And I'm like, yes, you are. So I made sure my sons went up there and got her stuff, her decorations out and helped her get everything set up. So she called me and she said, I've got her. And there she is and all her. Oh, my goodness. She's had a rough life. So she's almost 40 years old. But they're together again. And I have them hanging on my Santa Christmas tree. They're not beautiful, but they're sweet. So that was another kind of craft thing that I did. Um, so, I, like I said, I've been doing a lot of different crafts. And my plan this next week before Christmas is to keep working. I've got several sewing projects that I want to finish for my little niece that's three. And... Um, Cross-stitch-wise, I'm suspending my whip of the day and three-day focus. Because right now, everything is like, I'm in the W, so it's like wicked and witches, and it's Halloween, and I don't want to stitch Halloween. So I told Teresa, I said, I'm breaking my own rules, and I'm not stitching that stuff the rest of this year. I'm going to do Christmas. So I'm working on a sampler for Teresa. We do a sampler exchange, and um, I am three-quarters of the way finished with that piece. I was working on it last night and I've got the last upper, what is that, right hand corner to work on and it's big. But I'm going to finish it by Christmas. I've already got the frame. Everything's ready to go. So that's one of the things I'll be stitching on. And the other thing I'll, I'm going to stitch on and my plan is to finish is this big boy. Santa's Village. So I think if I stitch on this between now and the end of the year I can finish it because there's only three, three and a half, not even three and a half of the um, little houses to finish. And I'll have that done. Teresa and I were talking about it on Sunday. She's like, well, I said, I, I'm going to make a wall hanging out of it, I think. She's like, why don't you do like Priscilla from Priscilla and Chelsea? I'm like, yeah, I could do that. But I think I want to make a wall hanging, make it very kind of gingerbready like. But I'll, I'll go to look at fabrics and stuff like that. So that's going to be my main focus after I finish Teresa's Christmas sampler. That sampler is so beautiful, too. I keep telling Teresa, I think I, I'm going to just keep it and dig through my, my, my finished projects and just find you something else. It is beautiful. I'll have a picture of it on my next video. And the other thing I'm going to do is repeat the 12 Days of Christmas Sal from Stitch Mania this year. And I'm going to work on the same project. So last year for the 12 Days of Christmas, I started this. And so I'm going to continue. And what I did last year is each day, starting on Christmas, I worked on one of the 12 pieces. And I'm stitching these on individual pieces of perforated paper. And it's that flourish paper from Jim Shore. So that's as far as I've gotten with the a partridge in a pear tree. And my plan is when I finish all 12 of these to get the matching frames, square frames, and then hang them at the top of the wall in my living room. So isn't that cute? And the other ones, I mean, I've done a little tiny bit on some of the other ones. So like that's the fifth day. That's the third day. So cute pieces and I love this Jim Shore stuff and I keep this in my it's an old book let's see if I can figure out what when it came out in 2009 but I keep this in my Etsy store because I love it and I sell it every now and then so that's my my plans from now to the end of the year is to stitch on those three major things um one of the other things Teresa and I are doing this year is we're doing, we exchanged advent calendars. So I know she showed this on her video. So this is what she gave me. And I just picked these up at Hobby Lobby after Christmas. They're just, um, what is it called? It's just that brown paper mache type stuff. And she painted it. She did a great job, didn't she? So I figured... I figured, I think that's a southernism, I decided that on today's video I would show you what I've got so far. So today's the 19th, so I've got 18 little drawers, 19 little drawers to show you. 
So on day one, whoops, got some really cute buttons, wooden buttons. Day two, she got me some pearl cotton because she's going to teach me how to do heart anger. Day three, got some trim. Day four, I got this beautiful threads from Nina's Threads called Red Tile. Isn't that gorgeous? Love that. Day five, some of these boxes are really tight. Got Santa Bells. I love these bells. I got a set of these last year. So cute. She gave me two of those. Day six, look at these. Little tiny scissors. Day seven. Got some finishing fabric. That's beautiful. Day eight, some washi tape. Christmas themed. Cute. Day nine, some more thread, but this is Teresa's threads. She's been playing around with hand over dyeing threads, and this is one of hers. She calls it down the chimney. Good job, Teresa. That's beautiful. Day 10, some black pom pom trim. Definitely use that. Day 11, some more thread. This is another one of Nina's threads called olive oil. Pretty. Day 12, she gave me about 10 of these little binder clips, which I love these things. Um, just a segue, a little offshoot. If you don't go to Tuesday morning to look at their craft stuff, you should. I found this little tin. I think I paid like $9 for it. And when you open it, it is filled with those little binder clips. And if you know about these binder clips, that's a that's a good deal because these things are expensive. So there's probably a hundred of them there. And I got that. And the cute little tin for like nine bucks. Tuesday morning. Shop. Day 13. It's some more trim. It's that candy cane twine. Very cute. Day 14. Some more Christmas washi tape. Day 15 is another piece of finishing fabric. It's very pretty. I like that. Day 16. Oh, I think this is cute. It's a button, but it's Jennifer Jangles. Cute. Made by hand. So sweet. Day 17 is a needle minder, and it's um, one of those little wooden cutouts, but it's the vintage needle pack. So I love that. And day 18 is some more fabric, finishing fabric. And then today's the 19th. I haven't opened it, so we'll see what it is together. Oh, little wooden spools. How cute is that? Thank you, Teresa. So I have six more days, and she has done a great job. So cute. That's been fun. I'm glad we decided to do that. All right, so a couple of other things. My husband and I, on the 15th, celebrated our 27th wedding anniversary. And we, we you know, we got married really, really young. And we did. I was 19 when we got married. But, um... So usually we go on a trip or something for our anniversary. Last year we went to um, New York City for New Year's Eve. This year we decided to dial it back and just kind of hang out around the house. We went out to eat at one of our favorite restaurants in Hattiesburg and had a really nice meal. But about two weeks before that we went to an arts and crafts festival that the Craftsman's Guild of Mississippi puts on every year called Chimneyville. And we pick up, I usually pick up wooden spoons. They have several vendors that do wooden spoons. And I love wooden spoons. But this is one of the things that we got. It's kind of like our anniversary spending. This is a chainsaw carved tree that one of the artisans there does. He did had all kinds of things. But we love this. So we picked up a tree. 
Isn't that cute? amazing? And then the other thing we picked up is that there's a handmade pin booth there. And they have all these wonderful wooden carved items that are pins and uh, razors. They even have um, crochet hooks and all this kind of stuff. And I picked up, and my husband got one too. It's this really pretty pen and pencil set. And it's a single structure. So this is just black wood with all the mechanics in it. And it is, you can replace the insert. So that it has a pen, an ink insert. And then it also has lead that you can put in there. So they call it a drawing set. And you can use it as a pencil. And you can even get different color um, lead, which I did. And then I immediately went on Amazon and got different color ink. So I can do all kinds of things with this one pen pencil set. And then the top up here has the sharpener for the, the lead. So it's all cool. The only thing it doesn't have is an eraser and my husband has pointed that out that he needs an eraser so I need to go get a couple of erasers for him but isn't that beautiful so this is kind of like my anniversary gift and it came in this really pretty box so I feel all special when I use my pen all right let's see I'm almost done um one thing I know I mentioned my shop a lot I have an Etsy shop called Jen Stitching Niche um and uh, please go shop if you want to. Several of you come and shop and have been really nice to me this year. And I enjoy the process of, you know, packing orders. And I love ordering stuff to put into the shop. I'm actually going to upload a whole bunch of stuff today that I've gotten from Wichelt and from Hoffman. Um, but market's coming up soon. Market's coming up and the end of February, 1st of March. And so I was looking around in the area. I have it all stored in a very large closet downstairs. That's my shop. And I was looking around. I'm like, I need more space because I'm going to buy a lot this year. I've got to clear out some stuff. And I was talking to Teresa about it. And I mentioned that I was going to do, because I have a whole bunch of her raise the roof charts. And I said, would you be upset if I did kind of a clearance? And she said, no, do, you know, get, get, do what you want to do. So I decided to put together a set of raise the roof charts. There's 15 of them and I've got them marked for $25 for the 15. So that's less than $2 a chart. And they're in, right now there's the set that's up, they're all the same. So it's not like a true grab bag where you get different things. But in, I'm not gonna show all of them because there's some mystery to it, but there's kind of an idea of the 15 different charts. Um, this first one, Snip for a queen. I will show you that it does come with the little charm, so that's kind of cool. But if you're if you like Teresa's designs, you like raise the roof, then check that out in my Etsy store. And another thing I wanted to point out, and I haven't po posted it yet, I'm going to post it today, is that um, there is a book that uh, Blackbird Design released uh, several years ago. And people keep saying that it's out of print. And I, you know, I always go to Hoffman and look, and sure enough, it was there. Give me a second and I'll get it and show it to you. Okay, so this is the one. So if you're looking for this one, don't pay outrageous amounts for it. Just go to your local needlework store and ask them to order it through Hoffman, because I was able to get them through Hoffman. And it's a really cool book. It's got 12 different designs. Here's one. So very typical of black fur, very primitive. Love squirrels. So really cute. So again, before you pay crazy amounts for these charts that are older and people are saying are out of print, check Hoffman or check Witchell and see if they have them and then just ask your local needlework store to order them for you. Most of us order through Hoffman because they're super fast. Okay, so it's an oldie. Let's see if I can figure out what the date. 2002 so it's 15 years old but 
Like I said, I was able to get them through Hoffman. <coughs> and I'll have a couple of those listed if you're interested. But again, you can go to your local needlework store and ask them to order it for you. All right, so it's the end of the year. And the last thing I want to talk about is giveaway. So I'm going to do a giveaway. So if you stuck with me this long, congratulations. Um, and so you can enter into my giveaways. I'm going to do four different giveaways. One of them is just going to be the pass the stash. So if you're interested in this chart, I'm going to have this up um, just in the comments below. Don't mention giveaway. You have to be 18 years old or older. And if you're interested in this one, just say I love cats. And with that, I'm going to include some of these little kits that come with the magazines. So this one, Oops, this one, this one, and some little threads that came with one of them. So all of that is going to be I Love Cats. That's one giveaway. Another giveaway is going to be a Lizzie Kate Boxer. It says a perfectly kept, what is it? A perfectly kept house is the sign of a misspent life, which I think is hilarious. And it comes with the fabric and the buttons, not the threads. So there are the buttons. So if you're interested in this, you can say your opinion about housework in the comments below. The third one is another Lizzie Kate. This is one of her limited edition kits called Do Your Best. And it comes with everything you need to finish that little pin cushion. So it comes with the fabric, the threads, the trim, everything, and the chart. So if you're interested in that, just say, I'm doing my best. And then the final one is another kit from Lottie Da. This is Garden Birds Tool Book Kit. And it comes with all of the finishing, including the little what is that? Thread card. So if you're interested in that, you can just say something about garden birds. And of course, you can enter all four of them. The drawing is going to be on December 31st. I'll draw for each one of them. You can only win one. So if you enter all of them and you win one, your name gets pulled out of the rest of them. I'll just do random number generator based on the comments. And then I'll contact the winners of those four, probably on the 2nd of January. So um, with that, I just want to wish everybody happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Um, I hope you get a lot of stitching done over the next few days, finish up those last few projects before the start of the year. I did decide to join Stitch from Stash this year, so I'm all excited about that. I do that every year, kind of. I'm like, I'm not going to buy anything. So my plan is to get a lot of these projects that I've started done. I did really well this year. I actually have like 42 finishes this year. That's cross stitch finishes. So maybe the first of the year I'll do a finish parade of all the things I've completed this year. Because I did a lot. And I a lot of that's due to the floss tube idea of the whip parades and showing off all the stuff. So thank you. I've been a very motivating group for me to get so much done. Um, again, thanks for watching. And... I'll see you in a couple of weeks.